small crossovers have been gaining popularity riding on the jacked up coattails of an SUV craze. So, unsurprisingly, there's quite a bit of choice out there on a mid-30s budget. And when it comes to the business of small hatch and wagon SUV mashups, the Ford Focus Active, Subaru XV and the Volkswagen Golf Alltrack prove that car makers are all trying to follow a similar, if not quite exact, formula. So which is the ideal small crossover for you? Even at a cursory glance, it's clear these are three very different cars. Arguably the archetypal small crossover is the all-wheel drive Subaru XV, a sort of love child of the Impreza hatch and the Forester. Its high ground clearance, tall roofline and chunky tyres anchor a rugged appearance promising a go-anywhere format and the most SUV-like experience of the crossover pack. Our well-equipped mid-range premium version clocks in at a thrifty 32,670. By contrast, the front-driven hatchback-based Ford Focus Active couldn't be more different. For me, the Active is the nicest looking Focus, and I like this fetching grey. Yeah, it's nice, although for the best looking in the range, it's between this and the Focus ST line wagon. And like the wagon, this also comes with roof rails as standard, but not on this test car because this has the optional panoramic roof. But I want to talk about these wheel arches because look at that gap, there's barely anything oh, there. No. And this bash plate, well, it's made out of plastic, so that's not bashing anything. At $29,990, it lobs as the most affordable of our crossover bunch, though our fully optioned version here is closer to the mid-30s mark. Unlike the Focus, our Volkswagen Golf Alltrack is unashamedly a wagon. While the range starts at around 35 grand, our sharp-looking top-spec premium version of the all-wheel drive German clocks in at a tenner under 40 grand, making it the priciest on show. With this big rear overhang, the Golf stretches its length almost a segment larger than its rivals, so we're keen to see if the extra size translates into added accommodation on the inside. At around a metre wide and deep, the Golf Wagon's huge 605 litre boot is easily the most commodious on test. It expands via release levers to an unbeatable 1620 litres and features a ski port that's handy for those trips to the snow. At 375 litres, the Focus's boot isn't nearly as large as the Golf's, but it's a decent size for a small hatchback, its width and depth making for quite usable space. So why is it the only car here marketed as an SUV has the smallest boot and the smallest opening? Well, what's that all about? You know, SUVs are supposed to be more practical, and yet this boot is actually slightly smaller than the Impreza's. <laughs> oh, no. But look, a couple of saving graces, a uh, bit of an adventurous rubber floor mat here for yep. your wet stuff, and under here... That's a uh, full-size spare jazz. Yeah, which, you know, that's an important thing for some country buyers. So I wonder if this small boot translates to extra space in the cabin. I hope so. The Subaru compensates for its tiny boot space with quite generous interior size. Much like its exterior look, the cabin is quite fancy and stylized in design, with lots of texture and colour variation. The busy techie vibe anchored by its trio of display screens will find favour with many buyers' tastes, as will the high-set SUV-like seating up front. The XV also boasts the best rear legroom, with a reasonably comfortable and supportive seating in both rows, trimmed in a mix of leather and fabric. And lastly, the biggest car here, the Golf Alltrack. It's unmistakably a Volkswagen Golf in here, but I've got to say it's a cut above its two competitors in terms of premium ambience. Yeah, uh, you've got this very slickly presented digital infotainment display, and you've also got this very fancy digital driver display, though should point out that that's optional on this model as part of uh, an option pack. Lots of good details too, right down to the carpeted door bins. Yep, and do you know though, how you can tell that this is actually an all track and not a regular golf wagon? How, Jess? Well, I'll just flip down this lid here. All track. Nice. I think these seats are probably the most comfortable here, most sumptuous leather. Agreed, really good support on the back, the under thigh. And for space, I reckon it's comparable with the XV in the second row as well. Yeah, so despite having the longest wheelbase, yeah, not really much more passenger space. So the Subaru does do a good job in that regard. The Focus Active Cabin is the most modest of the field, not nearly as upmarket as the Volkswagen and not as fancy as the Subaru. But its low seating position will appeal to some buyers, even if the seats themselves aren't nearly as comfortable as its rivals. It does, however, match the Subaru and Volkswagen for 8-inch infotainment and is the only car here with handy inductive phone charging. 
While it's decent for its hatchback class, the Focus also has the tightest rear accommodation that suffers from limited knee and headroom. Ford even skimped on a rear armrest. So far, so different. But how do they compare once you hit the road? Right, the Focus. First observation is, it's not an SUV. Not even slightly SUV. No, the seating position, well, is it any different to a regular Focus? I don't feel I'm barely any higher off the ground. I feel like I'm in a hot hatch. And these seats, I must say, are just a bit terrible. They're sort of arched in the back and there's no support on your shoulders. Yeah, I think they're bespoke to the active and yeah, there's just kind of no real shoulder support. You kind of feel like you're being pushed forward. It's not uh, the most comfortable car that uh, I can think of, but it's sort of got this warm hatch vibe to it, hasn't it? It has, but uh, one thing I, I've noticed over the regular hatches is that this one actually rides a lot better and it does have a multi-link rear suspension rather than the torsion beam on the other hatches. Did you know? Yeah, and a rawdy little uh, 1.5 three-cylinder, yeah? Yeah, so it's the same engine that you get in the other Focuses and it's a characterful little thing. So actually, let's just drop a gear here. That sounds all right, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it goes all right too. Yeah, oh, it's a lot of fun to drive. Look, the Focus, is one of the most fun small cars to drive. And you know, at the heart of it is a really good chassis and steering that is kind of light, direct, involving. All right, let's go and find another car. So climbing out of the Focus and into the Volkswagen, first thing that strikes me and the big surprise is just how much bigger the Volkswagen feels, and it's a Golf. It is, well, and do you think you're getting that sense from the fact that the seating position is a bit higher than the Focus is? It's a bit of everything, it, it's, a, it's quieter, it has a sense of solidity, it's just, it rides a little nicer, it just kind of almost feels like, like chunkier and more substantial. Yeah, and it, even though it's a higher riding Golf, the road manners are still typical Golf. You know, really re refined. It's a very polite car, isn't it? Yeah. So. In fact, look, even if we put on some revs. That's nice. It's got uh, some herbs too. It's got know. some herbs. It's yeah. It sounds quite sporty. Good response. Yep. It's not as uh, raucous as the as the Focus, but it, it, it doesn't have that sort of anemic lack of shove that the Subaru has either. So um, it just feels substantial. Everything about this car feels substantial on the road. It is still, at the end of the day, a Golf, a classic Golf in the way it drives. You've got a good engine, you've got good ride comfort, and predictable, competent handling. Yeah, I like it. It's nice. It's nice. So last in sequence, but not necessarily in rating, is the Subaru XV, and it's quite obviously, from the passenger seat, an SUV. Definitely. It's like we've taken the express elevator to the penthouse suite because the view out is much higher than in either the, the Ford or the Volkswagen. And not bad ambience. It's more upmarket than the Focus for my money. Uh, not quite as quiet and refined and comfortable as the Golf. So uh, give it the berries. Let's go. Oh. Hear that drone. Oh man. And that's just with two up. Could you imagine like five up in the snow when you're curving up the snowy mountains? You'd have to listen to that din for, you know, for an hour on end. So, but it's not just the refinement that starts to go downhill once you pile on the revs and want a bit of speed. It's just the sluggishness of the response. It's just a, quite a frustrating car to drive whether you're on the motorway or a country road or around town you know you do get that uh, initially sharp response from the throttle pedal but it's just like a big tease because beyond that there's kind of nothing yeah but well, I, I want to I, I do want to end up on a on a positive though for the XV because the ride quality is fantastic I reckon it's great isn't it it's just really nice and supple you just kind of lope along soaks up the bumps yeah, terrific. Better than the regular Impreza, in fact, I reckon. Absolutely. And much different than its two other competitors. With its permanent all-wheel drive and Exmo traction smarts, the XV proved to be effortless in tackling our dirt hill climb test with more than ample traction from those chunky all-weather tyres. 
The Volkswagen's on-demand all-wheel drive also proved to be amply effective on our test course, its off-road functionality with hill descent working well. Traction was decent, but those low-profile tyres surely inhibit its capabilities on tougher off-road challenges. It might have demanded more time and effort to get up there, but the Focus did negotiate our track, the front driver's wheel spin causing a racket of stones bouncing off the underbody. Its modest ground clearance and lack of all-poor traction put serious limitations on its off-road ability. I didn't presume that these small crossovers were going to be identical at the outset of this test, but I didn't expect they were going to be so different. I mean, they really are for different buyers. Yeah, I mean, the XV makes the case for the country buyer with that elevated ride height and a really beautiful loping ride. Just a bit of a question mark over the value over a regular Impreza and that drivetrain, it's so frustrating, sluggish. The Focus really couldn't be any more different because it's just a hatchback in leisure wear. I mean, it's great on road and in actual fact, it's a lot of fun, makes for a great surrogate warm hatch. You just got to keep it on the blacktop. Yeah, it's a bit of a token effort on the SUV front, isn't it? I mean, it's barely jacked up over a regular Focus. Though saying that, it feels just like a regular Focus and it actually rides better thanks to that multi-link rear suspension. It's good fun and it makes for a fantastic surrogate warm hatch. It's a great car to drive. So, what do we think of the all track then? Okay, well, let's start off with the negatives because it is the most expensive car to buy here, even though you do get a bigger car. And it's also the most expensive to run because you've got to run it on premium fuel and the servicing costs are up to double either of these cars. But, you know, you do get all-wheel drive. It's the only all-wheel drive Golf you can get this side of a Golf R. You've got some nice SUV-ness to the exterior styling and then the rest of the package is classic Golf and that's a very good thing. For me, it's more SUV than the Subaru and it's nicer on road than the Focus. So if anything, it really fits the crossover bill more convincingly than its competitors. It is more expensive, but that's what you get. All tracks the winner then. So check out our full comparison written review at caravice.com.